All team, give it everything you got. It's time to fangirl flail with fangirls going rogue. Count me in. I don't think there's anything more important in the Star Wars universe than the fans. News, discussion, and commentary from the female point of view. You call this a diplomatic solution? No, I call it aggressive negotiations. With your hosts, Teresa Delgado, Trisha Barr, and Sarah Woloski. Boy, am I glad to hear your voice. Strap in, because this is where the fun begins. I like the sound of it. Is everybody ready? Guys, this is the fangirls. I said, are you guys ready? All right, good. Get your fan arms ready for Teresa Barr. And keep those hands going. Let's see a big fan flail for Teresa Delgado. They are the fangirls going rogue. Huh. huh. Huh, where is the other one? We have another podcaster? Yeah. Co host? Yeah. That's weird. I don't know. She might have gone a little rogue on us. She might have gone a little rogue. Hi, guys. How are y'all doing? Thank you so much for being here. We're so excited to be here with you for the second time in a row. Who was with us when we were in Anaheim? All right, so the rest of you, is the first time you've ever seen us live. All right, well, we have a show for you. It's going to be a treat. And for this particular show, we made a special design, which is on the shirt, which is hashtag carry on in honor of Princess Leia. Yeah. Uh, how many people listened to our episode with Dave Filoni from Star Wars Rebels? Yeah, thank you. That's one of our highest downloaded episodes, so well, rightfully so. But uh, we talked a little bit on that one today about what we were going to talk about, and we're honored that you guys chose to come here and enjoy this experience of being with the community. And specifically, when we talked to him, you know, we mentioned that we really wanted to highlight what women do in Star Wars, that there are women working on Star Wars, and that they're inspired by Star Wars to do other things even bigger and grander. So we're going to have some really great guests. And I feel like we need somebody special to talk about this. Yeah, I think we need maybe somebody that actually is Princess Leia, maybe? Yeah. Let's have her join the show. She's going to make her rounds. Guys, Sarah is here. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, hello everyone. I am Mrs. Han Solo. <laughs> I mean, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm Sarah Woloski. All right. So, Sarah, why did you feel like you wanted to dress up as Leia today, particularly with this discussion? Well, you know what? I knew we would be talking about Princess Leia and celebrating her legacy. And I really just felt like, you know, when I dress as Leia, it's a very simple outfit. So when I come to conventions, it's not an outfit I go to. You know, I'd rather do something more fancy or something if I'm going to cosplay. But then I realized when I was packing for this convention, I just I felt like it's the simplicity of this outfit that really is its power. I mean, it's it's white, it's simple, you've got the buns, but it it really it symbolizes not just the woman, but it symbolizes a princess. It symbolizes someone who can be strong, yet also very feminine at the same time. And I thought that's very important. And that has inspired generations now of individuals. So uh, just to, to know that there's, you can have a strong woman, but also be very princessy. We're, and we're, and we're celebrating yeah, the 40th. Absolutely. And yes. okay, I've got to give up my age. They joke about my age all the time, but <laughs> I was, you know, a wee one and my first Halloween costume was that costume. So oh, that's that that very one, actually. That one. Actually. Well, that yeah. one. <laughs> so yeah, that one. And then why did you wear it as a kid? Why did you want to wear it? Because you just didn't see characters like that. Women t just doing their thing. I mean, she saved, I know they got her out of the, the jail cell, mm -hmm. but then it was, you know, she had to save their hide. So, I mean, it represented a lot of things to me as a child. Yeah, it represents hope. 
you know, that word. <laughs> exactly. So, well, what's the one thing, now we're talking about Carrie Fisher as well as Princess Leia here. So what is the one thing that Carrie Fisher does at each celebrity lap dance, is what she calls it, when she goes to her conventions? Do you guys know? What's the one thing? Shout it out. Glitter bomb. So you know what we have here, and do we have I that? I have it. I'll get it. Yeah, okay. We have it. All right. So what we have here is we have glitter that each of you can use to bomb yourselves throughout <laughs> this convention. So Tr Trisha right now is getting the glitter, and what we're going to do is we're going to pass them around. They're like glitter wands. So while we're talking today, you guys can all. Um, Anno you know, anoint yourselves. It'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> and while we're doing that, um, and we have someone over here. She's helping uh, oh. Trisha right now. But our social media manager, Sandra, is with us today. <laughs> so, Sandra, you're helping us here today with the panel, but you also help us pretty much every single day. So mm -hmm. when you guys see our Twitter or our Instagram and you interact on in our Facebook group and you get messages back and things like that, the person that's doing that is this lady right here. And she's amazing. Hi, everybody. Good to see you. Good to see you. I'm really excited to be here. This is actually my first celebration. So I am getting to enjoy it. I am a school teacher, so I never get a chance to have a week off <laughs> um, around celebration time. So this is the first. It's actually spring break, and I get to come to celebration. So it is an amazing feeling. And just meeting so many of you that I interact with every day, pretty much, is really exciting. So good to see you. Lucky. I took days off of school. <laughs> yes, I'm on spring break. So what's one of your favorite things that has happened to you so far on this at celebration? Oh, my goodness. So I, I, I used to live in Orlando. I lived here for about 12 years. So it's like coming home. So I got here on Tuesday just to spend time with some family and some friends. And on Wednesday, um, I was hanging out in one of the hotels, and I ran into Ray Park. <laughs> and that was really exciting. It was... It was extra special, actually, because for ma many of you who interact with me know that my mother passed away this last, past October. So when I went home, so we're going through her things, and we're looking all over the place, and I looked on top of her fireplace, and here is the Monopoly piece of Maul. So, Aww. and he is one of my favorite characters. I never knew my mom had this. I never noticed it on the fireplace until... I went home after her passing, so that was I mean I immediately grabbed it, and I have kept it with me since um, since she passed away. And running into Ray Park and having this small um, Monopoly piece, it's like, okay, mom, you're with me. Thank you for for the moment. <laughs> okay. I'll just stop right now before I fall apart. So it is. I'm just happy to be here um, and to be able to help these wonderful ladies every day. Um, you guys, I enjoy it. She does everything that keeps it positive for us. So thank you very much for that. Uh, so, Sandra, now we're all crying. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, my goodness. Well, you know what? Let's, let's all talk about our favorite moments so far. And... Oh, well, before we do that, though, <laughs> I want you guys, I want to know about you guys. We all want to know about you guys. So who is new to Fangirls Going Rogue? Who has never heard of us before or, or who? Okay, perfect. Well, oh, we got, so welcome. Glad you're here. Yay. 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 Out of your day. We appreciate it. And yeah. We hope you enjoy the show. Everything you see today that we do is what we do on a regular basis. Uh, and we try to make sure we have a very positive community. Hopefully you can tell from everybody that's in the room. Um, but we're really excited for you guys to be here. Yeah, and yeah, we have, I mean, we can plug it. We have a Fangirls Going Rogue Facebook group, which is really fun, and uh, you can request to join, and you can meet all these wonderful people here, because I know a lot of you. Who here is on the Facebook group? A lot of people. Oh, my goodness! Yeah. So you guys all talk to each other, and then who here just listens to Fangirls Going Rogue? Yeah. Woo! I know, right? Me too! <laughs> Woo! Amazing. So that's so good to hear you guys. All right. So now let's talk about our favorite moments so far. And you know what? I think we just have to start with today with 
I mean, The Last Jedi, Absolutely. right? Yeah. If, it, if there's one favorite thing that's happened over the convention today, I would say that by far it is The Last Jedi panel and the trailer. Can we, I mean, the trailer, guys, right? Yeah. <laughs> Should we bring... Bring yeah. somebody up? Yeah, so I think we need another fangirl to help us talk yes. about this. So we are going to introduce Bethany Blanton from the Star Wars Report podcast. Come on up. Here you are, Bethany. Aww. All right, so I'm going to have you take this one. Let's. I get a mic. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. Mic okay. Check. That's a little low. Mic check. Yeah. yeah all right. <laughs> okay. Well, she is from the Star Wars Report podcast. Yay. Yeah. All right. So I think we'll just go around table here okay. and we'll talk about what is our favorite moment from the panel. So guests first. We're going to talk to you, Bethany. Are you doing panel or trailer first? Panel, panel first. first. All right. Panel. Oh, my goodness. This is so cheesy. But when Daisy Ridley walked out on stage, I just like single tear. <laughs> I don't even know why. Like, and and I just love Daisy Ridley so much. Oh, so, yeah. that's amazing! It was when she walked out on stage, and I stood up, and I was just holding my laptop, supposed to be doing press stuff, and I was just like, ah, "It's Daisy." I, I think I need. I think I need to follow up okay. on that moment because mine is when Ryan Johnson reminded everybody that she is the person that makes Ray believable. She is a hero, just like Carrie Fisher was a hero. And I was getting, that's when I was getting very choked up and I was like ready to stand up and do the standing ovation. And he kept talking and I'm like, yeah, yeah. So finally I was one of the people that applauded after he ended. So that was one of my favorite moments. Oh, well, mine kind of cheesy. But also sort of very, it has a Disney tie-in from the panel. When Mark Hamill comes out and he basically just refers to Josh Gad as Olaf. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not Josh yes. Gad, but Olaf. And I was like, that's true. Because anytime I see him or hear him, I just hear Olaf. And I know we all loved Beauty and the Beast and it was great. And he was LeFou and that was awesome. But I was like... He still kind of looks like a snowman. He does. <laughs> I'm Two round I'm balls. The only one who thought that. I was like, he looks like a snowman. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> other, you were thinking? Yeah. Was, was. What about you, Sarah? So I am going to piggyback off that now. And Mark Hamill himself is just, I mean, the fact that he can talk now and is on the press tour yeah. for The Last Jedi, like, I just love it. And, you know, he has to be careful because he'll take over a panel. And, yeah, <laughs> he almost did that today. But I love it. And I think my favorite thing of what Mark Hamill said was just reiterating what he almost says every time now. But it's the fact that it's the fans that have brought him where he is. And I just, I love that the love is returned yes. every time. And it's just every time he reiterates that, it just makes me tear up. I feel like he loves the fans so much that they decided to film on an island so that he couldn't be accessed <laughs> by fans. They're like, we got to keep this dude locked down or he will talk. On lockdown. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. So I think we will move on to our favorite moments in the trailer of The Last Jedi. Okay. Well, hang on really quick. Okay. Is there anybody in here who oh. hasn't seen the trailer yet? Oh. Oh. Oh, oh. oh no. Oh, no. Okay. Um, we'll just be. Um, <laughs> we don't know anything that's happening. We just seen moments. We just seen images. So it is um, a teaser trailer. So it's not. Are like, you guys okay you know. if we mention some stuff? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. All right. People. Okay. All right. So then, Bethany. I know. Uh, yeah. Or do this with your ears. You know. Put some Leia buns on. La, 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 la. And, you know. Okay. <laughs> so Bethany, your favorite moment in the Last Jedi trailer. It would have to be the moment where you first see Luke Skywalker. Mm. And what did he, refresh our memory, what did he look like? Uh, so he looked a lot like he did in The Force Awakens, but the fact that we hear him speaking mm. <laughs> may have had a lot to do with, with the reason why I love that moment so much. But. An actual, well, we don't know. We, don't know. we, have, we, have no we never idea. know. Well, I mean, if we go back, just rewind even a year ago, Rogue One. I mean, pretty much everything we saw in the trailer never made it to the film. Yep. Yes, uh, basically. So, who knows? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Remember that I'm no one from yeah. The Force Awakens yeah. yes. that wasn't in there either. A lot yeah. of things Maz Kanata said. What did you say? 
I rebel. Yeah, I rebel. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So who knows? I have a shirt that says that too. Like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I guess I'll, I'll go with mine. And for me, it was probably the moment, just that very opening scene when Ray's hand lands on the ground just because we don't really know what's happening in that moment. And actually, just peeling back the curtain a little bit, pre-show, we were actually trying to, you know, dissect that and figure out what that was. But for me, that one moment, I was, it, like, grabbed me and pulled me in, and I just wanted to be like, oh, my God, give me more. Give me more. Give me more. Oh. You made me change my mind. Is that yours now? <laughs> it was like the, when, when you see the little bits floating up. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everyone go, ooh. 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 Oh, I love you. <laughs> All right. What about you? I Prisha? feel like I shouldn't say a Ray thing, but I'm going to. So okay. uh, there's that shot, the long shot of it's obviously oh, yeah. Luke and Ray with the light out. Uh, Lightsaber with the lightsaber. Yes. It's a long shot, which we don't see a lot in movies anymore. Those beautiful ones that were in the original Star Wars movies. And, you know, you get to see a long shot of the setup and the island and just that grand moment. And that was the one where my heart was like, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was good. oh. <laughs> Who else loved that moment? Who else loved oh, that yeah. moment? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It. I'm surprised at you, actually. Well, because it was predictable the- if I said Poe. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> Poe and BB-8 were running towards you. <laughs> like Whoa. That. I'm pretty sure at that moment you were just like, but it, <laughs> apparently her sure heart for. skipped a beat. It didn't po, go bum, 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 bum. Hi. <laughs> She loved that one too. I try yeah. to keep that like like closet boyfriend. Oh, pro, so. I think it's you out now. To. You don't need to. I, I say all the time, "Who's my boyfriend?" Mall. Mall. There we go. Okay. So, po. Po. Yeah. Who's, right. who's Trisha's boyfriend? Poe. Who's you. my boyfriend? Hans. Hans. Thank Hans. you. Yes. Here we go. Lord, <laughs> Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> Superhero. Yes. <laughs> So, Sarah, what about you? What was your favorite moment? All right. So I think my second favorite was Trisha's moment with, uh, with Ray. However, my favorite, the most intriguing moment to me was when they showed, I'm going to call it right now, the Journal of the Wills or whatever that journal was with the symbol oh. of the Jedi on there. It's like very ancient, very old. The balance. And yes. The ba- balance. And yes. yes. And Luke saying balance over that. I was like, oh my God. Like that just opens up a whole new can of worms. And I just love anything having to do with the mythology of the force yes. and things. So I, I'm really intrigued as to what that is going to lead to. If we see it in the movie. Who knows? Yeah, it's true. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but before we move on from this, we do want to get you guys involved. So we want to know what your favorite moments of the trailer were, if you have one. We have someone way back there on the floor. Yes. Come on up here. Come, Come on, on up. up. Ooh. Ooh, look at her dress, too. Oh, I know. Woo. Bonus points for the Phasma dress. Oh, very cool. Very nice. So what's your name? Michelle. Michelle. All right. What was your favorite moment? I have to say when we see that very tiny little moment when Phasma walks out of the fire. Oh, yeah. yeah, That was good, too. Because there's still always that doubt. Well, she's... We don't see her anymore in The Force Awakens. We don't hear any reference to her again. They may have killed her off, and that's kind of a... A bummer. bummer. They put her in the trash (laughs) compactor, though, and we know that you can get out of those. So... (laughs) This right? That's a conceit of Star Wars. <laughs> but just seeing her in there and just leading the troopers through the fire and reflecting my heart, like, my girlfriend is safe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. okay. Nice. Anybody yeah. else? Who else? Come on, Come on up. up. Come on up. And um, we'll take, like, maybe, like, three people after her. So if yeah, you so guys you want to line up. some, you know, some of your favorite moments, you can just come line up for us. Hi. Your name? Angie. Hi, Angie. I think my favorite moment was the very end with the, the dramatic pause, and then when Luke says, the Jedi need to die. Because or they that, said, or he must he end. says, must, must end. end. Yeah. Like, it just drew me in so much, like, I have no idea what you're talking about, and I must know right now. Yeah. <laughs> now we have to wait to, to December. Yes. Yes. Oh. Anybody, Anybody else? Anybody else? doesn't have favorite to be here. It can be guys. Oh, nice. Ooh, we have a fan kid. This What's your name, sweetheart? Oh, sorry. Uh, my name is Eliza. Hi, Eliza. Hi, Eliza. 
Um, this is really difficult. There's a lot that I really like. Um, I think, honestly, just more emotional for me, uh, that one shot with, um, with, with uh, Leia, Carrie Fisher, that just kind of, because, I mean, you know, I get, I get to see her, you know, mm-hmm. just one more time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know, it just sort of got to me. But also just anything with Ray, because, honestly, she's my favorite character. <laughs> Yay! <Aww. laughs> Awesome. And what's your name? I'm Melissa. Melissa. Hi, Melissa. And I would have to say, seeing the falcon fly again. <laughs> Woo! Is, very cool. Very cool. I mean, it's the falcon. It's my favorite ship in probably any fandom. And I, I know you guys had a discussion on the falcon as a character. And it I is. totally agree that it is its own character. Yeah. So that was my favorite part of The Force Awakens, was seeing the falcon fly again. And I can't wait to see her in action again. Yay! Yay. Awesome. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. <laughs> Did you have a favorite moment, Sandra? When I'm just trying to figure out what is going on with Ray, because as she as she appears, I'm like, is she flying in the air and just jumps down, and all we see is her hand shaking. So it's 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 emotional. I'm just trying to figure out what is going on, what's happening. Wh- okay, what's going on? So I'm ready for December. She tripped. Is that what happened? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Well, everyone, thank thank you, Bethany, for joining us. Yay. Give Bethany a big round of applause. All right. And before we move further, I'm sure you guys can see that we have some stuff up here. Because that's one of the perks of coming to a live show is we get to give stuff away. So Uh, we're going to pull four tickets um, for this first set of giveaways. (gasps) And so our first one is going to be the Black Series Ray... And it is ticket number 29025. So the first number is zero. So 29025. Jacob, come on up. Oh, okay. Okay. So Eliza. (laughs) All right. Now. As you guys can see here, one of the most coveted Black Series figures that apparently doesn't sell uh, (laughs) is Ahsoka Tano from Star Wars Rebels. And the winner of that one is 29032. Oh, Margaret. Ahsoka lift shirt on. Margaret Mays, come on up. Get your Ahsoka. All right, our next giveaway is... The Force Awakens. Force Awakens novelization by Alan Dean Foster. Woo! Okay. Oh, wait. Uh oh. This one. <laughs> Two nine one zero six. Two nine one zero six. Oh yeah! All right. And the next thing is a R two D two coin purse that I love. It's very cool. Oh, there is. Oh. <gasps> Secrets. Oh. There's a, there's good stuff She's inside, keeping it. Apparently. 29043. 29043. <laughs> there you go. All right. Congrats. Nice. Wow. Oh, bag of goodies. So is there anyone out the crowd that would want this? No. Oh, look at the little girl right mm-hmm. there. Aww. Aww. Sweet. This is why Star Wars fans are amazing. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) All right. So we're going to invite up a special guest, Ruth Amos from DK Publishing, who is come here and talk a little bit about what she does uh, and her job. Yeah, and one of our missions, as you guys know, is to highlight people that work in Star Wars and, and, you know, they provide more content for all of us to see, and especially women that do that. So, Ruth, welcome. Hi, hello. Thank you for having me. This is Ruth's first trip to a celebration in America, right? right. First time in America, full stop. Oh, wow. Well, welcome. We're so excited to have you. Thanks for having me. 
Ruth was my editor on the Star Wars Visual Encyclopedia. That's how I get to meet her. She essentially has to herd all the cats, the authors, <laughs> and keep us going, and she does it very politely. But what other books have you worked on that people might recognize for the Star Wars books? Um, so you might know uh, Star Wars Absolutely Everything You Need to Know. Uh, that was my baby. Um, and I've also worked on some of our sticker collections, like Star Wars Rebels, um, Secrets of the Rebels, and some of the readers that our Padawans might have read. Um, so Lego, some Lego Star Wars ones, like Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. So it's a, a nice selection. Yay. Do you have like recommendations for kids who would like to follow in this type of career path to possibly get into publication? Because it, it is a you know, something that you don't necessarily learn about. How, what would you recommend for kids, especially going to school and what they need to work on? Reading is so important. Um, in, in one way, it doesn't really matter what you read. As long as you keep reading, find what you love, find a genre that, you, that interests you and let it capture, it needs to capture kids' imaginations. Um, I was a huge bookworm when I was little. Um, and I love Roald Dahl, for example. They love the witches oh, and the BFG. Um, and I always knew that I wanted to... Publishing is a really creative industry and I always knew that I wanted to... Um, write in some capacity, writing as well as editing. But for kids, find what you love, and it, whether that's Star Wars or something else, if, if you like that, that's cool, and read as much as you can, find, find what you can. Um, DK do a great range of readers. We, they're, um, they're for all different children's um, reading capabilities, different levels, um, so that could be a good way to start. And we've got new um, fold-out flat books. We've got the amazing book of Star Wars and the amazing book of Lego Star Wars, um, and they've got big fold-out pieces and really cool, massive images of people of um, droids like BB-8. And just qu quite simple text explaining what, what's so great about them. Um, that's a good place to start for little ones. And as, a, as an editor, I would think that's... Is that a creative job? Like, yeah? yeah and what, what about it is creative? Because I would think you would sit just reading and, like, editing lines all day. I but think, do you... I think she should tell her story about Ooh. putting the page together that you told it. The, oh. Yeah. 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 So in the Star Wars Visual Encyclopedia, the book that I work with, with Trisha, we have two spreads on helmets. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done in my job. Um, the Star Wars Visual Encyclopedia, for people who don't know... Um, we've got over 2,500 images in the book, and it's a beautiful visual reference guide. Um, and we categorise everything. We're, we're treating the Star Wars galaxy like it's real, and we have, we have chapters on history, geography, culture, science and technology. And in the culture section, we have two beautiful spreads of helmets, which was so hard to classify, because how do you? Helmets are used by so many people, there's so many different owners. They all have different functions, for example. So... Um, We'd spent, the team at DK, it's a large team working on the book, and we must have spent, oh, I think several weeks trying to categorize helmets. And <laughs> they've also got to look great, because we, you know, we work with images, and they, it needs to look beautiful. And at the end, ultimately, me and Matt, one of the other editors, we actually sat down, we cut out with scissors every single, we printed out every single image of helmets we had, and there were a lot, cut them out with scissors, and we literally glued them together in a giant collage uh, to try and work it out, and I still have that collage. It's, um, it's next to my desk um, in Pride of Place. Um, um, it does look like a three-year-old put it together. Um, <laughs> but that's how we cracked that. That's how we solved how you, how you put these things into classifications, and it's, it's very subjective, so there's different ways of doing it, but that was what we felt was right for us and for the book. So you had to act like a three- or four-year-old, essentially, and, you know, <laughs> put it back in glue, glue and paper and scissors. Yeah, it's, some, it's not always about the um, snazzy printing. Sometimes you need to go back to basics. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very cool. And you said, so this is your first time in America and then your first time to Celebration. What? Uh, it's, it's my second. It was uh, Okay, you said Celebration London. London. So yeah. what have you? gotten to experience this time around at this celebration that has been different and interesting for you just the sheer size it just it's amazing i think they say that everything in um the usa is sort of 10 times bigger than <laughs> in the uk just the, and then and you haven't even been to texas hey. <laughs> uh, yeah just the size and um, the number of people in in their amazing cosplay uh, outfits and um just the people, it's been so cool to interact with fans, people who like reading our books. 
maybe it's a stereotype of the British that we're maybe a bit more reserved. I don't know, but so many people have come forward and started chatting and been really friendly. So, Aww. yeah, it's been good. I have I've yet to explore um, the show floor because uh, yesterday was quite a crazy day, but I'm going to take some time out this afternoon to go and, and yeah, do some exploring. Nice. Beautiful. Nice. Beautiful. Well, thank you, Ruth, so much for coming and just getting to shine a light on what you do. We appreciate it. The kids, the adult kids, the kids appreciate it. Yes, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, if you haven't picked up the DK books, you really should. Uh, they're just gorgeous, and we love going through them. When we talk on, on our podcast and stuff, a lot of times the three of us will all have one of these as reference guides when we're talking about locations and different things and we need to reference all kinds of stuff. We use them as our reference books. And it's, you know, so thank you for making yeah. them. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for writing thank them, you. Trisha. Yeah. Thank you very much. I know, I know. Thank you. you guys, we, the authors get a lot of credit for doing these books, but the editors are the ones that are working really hard on them and they're kind of the unsung heroes of getting them done. So thank you, Ruth, so much for coming. Yay. All right. Well, I think it's time for some more giveaways. What do you think? (gasps) More giveaways. giveaways. All right, everyone, get your tickets ready. All right. So a couple of my thing, my favorite things are coming up. We've got (gasps) some Hot Wheels cars. First one's going to be BB-8 and this is going to go to 29072. Woo! We got a winner. All right, come on up. All right, and then we're going to switch over to Funko Pops <gasps> and with the Star Wars Rebels one of Sabine. 29056. Two, there we All go. right, awesome. come on up. <laughs> and Since our... we were just talking <gasps> about DK, yep. how about a Star Wars The Force Awakens visual dictionary? Guys, this, if you're ever watching The Force Awakens at home, which you should be like every night, uh, you need to have this sitting next to you because any question you really have, and you're like, what is that? Let me look. And you can go and look at this. 29088. 29088. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Come on over. All right, we do have another guest. And I'm going to let Trisha introduce this one. Yeah, I had... pretty awesome. Yeah, I know. Ladies that are doing awesome things. So I have my STEM panel. I don't know if anybody here got to go to it. Uh, STEM and Star Wars. It was right after the 40th, sort of with it. But Holly Griffith from NASA, who's also an amazing Leia fangirl. I want you to welcome her to the stage. Holly, first, can you just tell people what you do for and have done as an engineer? Uh, sorry, not an engineer, but in STEM, and what so they just know the amazing things you've worked on. Sure. So, um, I'm a mechanical engineer. I work at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. When I started at Johnson Space Center, I worked on the space shuttle program as a flight controller. Um, my system was the electrical power system. Uh, so the space shuttle ended in 2011. When that happened, I moved over to the International Space Station program on the mechanical systems. I did that for a little while, and now now I'm currently working on the Orion program. Orion is the vehicle that's supposed to replace the space shuttle, and my system now is the environmental systems. So I'm doing safety for that vehicle. How amazing is that? That's so cool. I know. Holly's also a big Star Wars fan. You've been what, you've been to Celebration. You've been on other panels before. Which ones have you been on? Um, at Celebration Six, we actually did a, uh, a NASA Star Wars panel. It was kind of a science and science fiction panel, and how they uh, they influence each other. Uh, and that was um, that was amazing. We we put it together uh, kind of quick, and and it got accepted. And we had over eight hundred people. They were turning people away. We were blown away. Wow. We, we did not expect that many people. I mean, we were. It was great. So um, I don't know if anyone here was at that one or saw it, but Ooh, oh, we have really? back there. Yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I think much. Uh, that was Eric Geller. Yeah, who, Eric, yeah, Eric was was the some mo- people was might the know moderator. Eric. Yeah. And uh, the support was, was wonderful. We were, I mean, thank you. 
Well, I think NASA has a really awesome social media, so I love to follow NASA on social media and just learn all the things that you guys are doing. It's amazing. It, it really is. It really is because there's so many different centers across the country, and you know, California, and then there's Houston, there's Florida, and and others, you know, all just other states around the country, and and everyone does a different thing. You know, one does robotics, one does you know the the. Uh, like the Pluto mission, you know, want to do the the Mars missions. In Houston, we do the man space or human space flight. In Florida, they they launch the rockets, of course. And so everyone does a different thing, and then they're all really cool. So there's so many different things to follow with each of the different centers. And oh, that's so cool. You have um, some inspiration too from Leia. You want to talk about? That's one of the reasons I wanted you to come. <laughs> Leia is kind of the reason I am where I am. Um, you know, I. I, I'll date myself too. <laughs> so Star Wars came out the year before I was born. So I grew up with Leia. Um, and Leia was kind of, you know, seeing her, it was like, she, she was different, right? I mean, we all know as, you know, young women, uh, young girls watching her, she was different from, from other women in, in film or TV that we had seen before. And it was like, look at this, look at this girl. She's doing all this stuff. Oh my gosh. And so it was kind of like, well, I want to do that kind of stuff. And so what do I have to do? Well, okay, I'm, she's in space. I want to do that. <laughs> Step one. <laughs> okay, NASA. All right. So uh, step two, engineer. Okay, I can do that. And so honestly, it was kind of like a little checklist from my guess at the time. I'm six or seven getting interested, not just in that, but also astronomy and, and different things. Uh, science and so uh, just working my way through school, you know, high school, to, like okay, science and math, um, and then college, and 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 deciding on mechanical engineering as a major, and and then uh, starting, you know, to to focus more on on space, you know, in terms of not just mechanical engineering, but taking things like astrophysics and astronomy and and going in that direction, mm-hmm. and then once I graduated, um, I moved to Houston and, um, and well, in college I did some internships. Uh, actually through Marshall Space Flight Center in, in Huntsville, Alabama. And, uh, and then I moved to Houston, and I got a job as a flight controller. And, and that's where I am. And, and it's honestly because of Princess Leia and Star Wars. And so... Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Follow your dream. <laughs> wow. well, I just love the fact that there's three Texas women on the panel right now. <laughs> for me and I love I love NASA and for anybody who has never gone to like the space centers and stuff like that why should they go and what can they find sort of related to Star Wars there for them to start Ooh. making those connections between NASA and so a lot of people so why should they go um, it, a lot of people and you know I'm not saying it's anyone here but doing outreach and you know working at NASA and seeing what we do and knowing what we do and talking to the public, a lot of people don't know what NASA does. And when you talk to people who aren't who aren't familiar with it, they're like, "Well, why why do I pay? Why why does my tax money go to fund this?" And 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 they think that like 25 percent of the federal budget or something crazy goes towards NASA. And it's actually 0.5 percent. So going Whoa. to these centers, you see, you know, you see the hardware, you see these mich- these these vehicles that went to space, that went to the moon, you know, that uh, you see the science that's been done and and the good, you know, that's that's come of it. Um, your, your phones, your iPhones, your you know, your smartphones, things like that, integrated circuits. I mean, you wouldn't have that. We needed that to make those smaller to fit in a spaceship to go to the moon in the 60s. <laughs> so. It's you know it's things like that. Um, now in terms of Star Wars, there's there's a few things that um, you know NASA and Star Wars have kind of a, a funny little history. We we have acronyms. We have an R two D two. I don't remember off the top of my head what it stands for. We have a C three PO acronym. That's for our commercial crew office. Um, we have a Robonaut on the space station right now. The, he's we have Robonaut two right now, but the first Robonaut he looked a lot like Boba Fett. Um, <laughs> 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 and uh, so there's uh, there there is some hardware that's uh, that's kind of Star Wars related, but but uh, George Lucas did get the idea for the uh, the crawler in in uh, on Tatooine in, in Episode Four, oh. the, the Jawas from oh the, the sand crawler yeah the sand crawler that that from the vehicle that brought the the Saturn V oh. to the launch pad. Wow. Oh, cool. <laughs> so he took that from us. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. 
Well, since we have you here, we kind of want to talk a little bit about the 40th anniversary panel. And, of course, I mean, I think most of you guys, if you saw it in one of the streaming rooms or on the live Star Wars show stage or on your phones, there was a part in there that was very much the, the tribute to Carrie Fisher with Billy Lord and, and all of that stuff. What did that mean to you, getting to see Billy Lord up there and then the video that came after? I, I was watching that late last night in my hotel room <laughs> crying, I'm not going to lie. Um, I, first of all, I was impressed that she was able to, to, to do that and, and keep it together. I mean, she, what an amazing young woman, but given who her mother was, it's, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Um, gosh, that's, that's, a, that's a hard question because, I mean, it was such a great tribute, you know, the way she delivered the speech, the, you know, the Obi-Wan speech. And, yeah, how she kept it together, yeah, I have no idea. Whole thing and, but seeing the audience support, you know, how, the, their, how they clapped and, and, you know, seeing them support her was, was great. But the video was, I, I mean, I just thought it was great. I thought it was so well done. It was so well put together. And, and um, seeing her thank the fans and that meant a lot, you know, knowing how much the fans meant to carry. Um, and that obviously they mean a lot to Billy too. That's, that meant a lot to me. So yeah. I, and I, remi- I think reminding everybody that she, Carrie appreciated us and that she yes. did, she did love us. Cause sometimes, you know, sometimes you just think, well, maybe they're like really cynical about these things, right. but J- Carrie always felt very genuine. Yeah. So, yeah. and, yeah. and her reaffirming that, you yeah. know, because we'd never get to say that again. We never get that option. So I guess let's just talk about a few of our favorite moments from that panel. Sarah, I'm pretty sure I know what yours was, but just for grins. <laughs> oh, what from was the- your favorite part of the 40th anniversary panel? <laughs> the whole panel itself? Would of course have to be John Williams <laughs> being there and conducting. And it started out with Princess Leia's theme, yes. which is so different. Um, living in LA, Richard and I have gotten to go to the Hollywood Bowl. We make it a point every year to go when John Williams is conducting because, I mean, he's the master. It's amazing. And this, I mean, this like topped that, I think. It was just so emotional, that moment. And then the fact when when he played the main title theme of Star Wars and towards the end when it gets to that the ceremony theme, the throne room theme, that's where I, like, the tears started gushing because just uh, the mixture of John Williams being there and the music and the musicians and then, of course... Um, I think the musicians themselves were extra pour, pouring some extra emotion yeah, yeah, into their playing, and I felt that. Yeah, I would agree. Trisha, what about you? You know, we got to see Harrison Ford, Sarah, and I did for the press release of for The Force Awakens yes. for the press event, and we were this close. So being in the room again, it was like that was like golden. It was a second opportunity. But so for me, none of us have really seen Hayden Christensen at – Star Wars, he was at the one before Attack of the Clones. That's his last one. And I thought it was so cool that he got to realize that the fans do love him, um, Mm -hmm. you know, and that he got, I felt like the crowd really embraced him. It made me very happy. No, that's very good. And, you know, it's interesting. We just had, if you listen to our episode with Dave Filoni, I took that into account when I was watching that particular part and decided to tweet out hashtag hot Anakin. (laughs) because I just felt like it was appropriate. But, you know, I do really think that it's important that we always let our stars of Star Wars know that we appreciate everything that they've done because then we have people like Hayden Christensen who I've heard he really doesn't, he was scared to come to the convention because he really thought that it was going to be a negative response. And I think that when we do the kind of stuff that we do and we misuse social media and things like that, we can really affect a person to make them feel that way, which is really unfortunate because he really truly is Anakin. We love Matt Lanter, but he really is Anakin and we need to embrace that. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that movie, would, Revenge of the Sith wouldn't have been what it was without the hard work he put in exactly. and, you know, he his comedic chop to make things, you know, to be that snark that we all kind of love about Anakin. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I did have one more point in that panel, and it was very short. It's when John, they introduced John Williams, the curtain opened, and everyone was screaming and cheering like they did the whole panel, and then John Williams went, 
and everyone was quiet in like two seconds. Like it's the master. He's a master conductor too, folks. Like it works. He needs to pass that on to like every school teacher. Right? Yes. Yes. He yeah. turned around. Oh my god. It's all it was amazing. It's all in the eyes, guys. It's all yeah. In the eyes. For me, I would say my favorite part was actually, I think something that may have been ad-libbed, maybe not, but as you guys know, we love Ewoks here, and I love Warwick Davis. And when Harrison Ford came on stage, just the I-4 plane landing joke <gasps> was just so perfect. And it just, that was, that's great. Absolutely. And especially the fact that Harrison left, because I was like, okay, he's going to walk away. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He's never coming back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks and for having me. Yeah. Sure. Yay. Thanks, Holly. Yeah. It's giveaway time again. Like I said, we have lots of stuff to give away to you guys. Today. Woohoo! Uh, first up is actually going to be a book that I love. It's by an <gasps> artist, Zach G. Longo. He is amazing. He actually has another one of these getting ready to come out. Ooh. This is a Star Wars Doodles book. And if you... Uh, listen to any of our other podcasts Star Wars Bookworms actually has a button that was designed by him Um, 29066 29066 wow exciting and then we have the Rogue One art of coloring book so that you know coloring (gasps) therapy 29099 29099 woo alright come on up have another winner. Use it well. Use it well. Relax in color. Relax in color. And we have a three and three quarter inch Sabine figure. Ooh. Two nine one zero five. Two nine zero one six. Ooh. Yay. Yay! All right. The Mandervillians. Woo! This is for the. Yeah. For the. Thank you. It's for Sabine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and our last Hot Wheel that we have, which is the Chopper Car, 29078. 29078. Woo! All right. Come on down. Exciting. All right, you guys. It is time now for the character discussion. Sidious, Anakin, Luke, and Leia, Qui-Gon Jinn. La 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 salacious crumb. Fortuna Boba Fett, I'm a dollar wicked. R2 D2 BB8, I can barely keep it straight. It's a character discussion. It's the fan girls on character. It's a character discussion. Okay. <laughs> well, we've had a lot of amazing moments at Star Wars Celebration Orlando so far, but I think, of course, along with the theme of this panel, which is hashtag carry on, we wanted to talk about Princess Leia, but not just Princess Leia, the person. Uh, We want to talk about her legacy and her legacy with her relationships that she has with other um, characters in Star Wars. So Trisha, talk a little bit about her legacy for us. Well, her legacy is essentially that she was building a community and bringing people together. She brought Luke into the rebellion. She brought Han into it. Chewie via Han, and that's sort of what we wanted our legacy to be when we started, was to create a community. Uh, one was so that girls knew there was a space that they could have, that there were other Star Wars fans, and then also a space that men could be part of too, and everybody would enjoy and know that we could all love Star Wars and have these discussions, be friends on Facebook, come to places like this, and just show each other our love for Star Wars. I mean, even if we don't like the same things, you know, everybody knows Teresa's the dark sider and uh, Sarah and I are the light siders usually, but we have things that are in common, that's Star Wars and our love for Star Wars Rebels and the Clone Wars. So we don't have to like the same things in anything, but we're still friends. Yeah, absolutely. And so we want to start this off just talking about relationships. So Sarah... Why don't you take it away and start this off? Okay. So for me, the most important relationship that Leia has had with another character is with Han. Because for me, that's it's their romance that brought me into the Star Wars saga. Who else had that experience? Nice. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Awesome. And yeah, it's just, I think that relationship there, it teaches us about 
love. It may not be the most, the best loving relationship, right? But it, it just, it teaches a way of, of those characters that they love each other even though, even through hardship and everything. So I just think it's the romance of Star Wars that helped me get into it. So I'm glad that it helped some of you as well. When you talk about just the portrayal in Bloodline, specifically the bu- that book that Claudia Gray wrote and we yes. got to interview her, and just showing that, you know, sometimes you're in a relationship and that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be doing everything together, that sometimes you have to go off and do things that you do. That's very relatable for me as a person. You know, I have a job. I have to take care of things and do things on myself sometimes. But to still know there's somebody there that you come back to, which we got to see in Bloodline, right? Mm -hmm. And so I I appreciate that that sort of reminds people of how to have a – in, in the end, she had to do what she needed to do, which she felt was important. Right. Yeah, they, they kind of went their separate ways. And I, I am kind of sad that in The Force Awakens, they took a morning look at their relationship. Like the fact, morning as an M-O-U-R-N. Uh, the fact that they were, the relationship was dead already. Um, I, I think we would have felt that moment more of Han Solo dying. No, I think Bloodline kind of... Yeah, it retconned. fleshed it out a little it, bit. It made it more like they were just doing their things. And there's so much we don't know. You know, that's the, you don't know, you assume things, right? Yeah. Has anybody watched Harrison Ford and George Lucas on the Star Wars show? They did an interview last night. Has anybody gone and watched that? Okay. Well, I definitely recommend it. Uh, Just go take a listen to what Harrison Ford says about (gasps) Han Solo. I'm not going to say anything else. Okay. It's our homework. Trisha gave us homework. Once again, Trisha gives you homework. (laughs) And my homework for Sarah was she'll have to cut it into the show. Okay. There you you go. go. All right, thanks. As Han's story came to an end in Force Awakens, did you feel, how did you feel about the ending? Did you feel good about the ending? Do you like the way his story ended up? Did did you see that as Han's ending? (laughs) Uh, (laughs) To paraphrase Monty Python, I'm I'm not dead, I'm just resting. (laughs) (laughs) So, so... Between you and Samuel's video, that means we're getting a Han Solo, Mace Windu, buddy cop movie soon. (laughs) You know, I mean, I do, I love Han and Leia. They were one of the first couples, really, that we ever see. And one of the first couples I ever saw on screen, and I love that. But you were talking about, like, we take this morning look in The Force Awakens, but it almost makes everything so much better because you see a couple that's gone through their trials and their tribulations and for lack of a better sense of it you know losing their son and not having that sense of family and community that they probably wish that they had had Hmm. and but for me it really emphasized their relationship because when they see each other you can tell that there is that love and that passion there so i think it's really awesome and you're speaking of families The take I took on this, I decided to sort of try to flesh something out that really hasn't ever been fleshed out, which is actually Leia's relationship with her parents, and not just her adoptive parents of the Oregonas, but also her actual parents that she never got to meet. And I am a firm believer that no matter who your parents are, even if you don't meet them, you always will have a relationship with them, even if it's not a face-to-face relationship, because personality traits are passed along through your DNA, and there are things that do get passed to you. And she's affected by her parents very strongly. And we do know that she does know who her mother is. She doesn't find out who her father is until obviously a little bit later. But she ends up following in her adopted father's and her actual biological mother's footsteps, right? Because Mm -hmm. she goes into being a senator and doing all of that. And she gets instilled this power that she has of leadership and everything. But that didn't just come from them. Her mother, Breha Organa, her adoptive mother, was also a ruler. She was the queen of her planet you know and so she has two moms that were these rulers that sort of gave her that ability to be independent and to be you know very strong in herself confident to speak up and all of the things that we try to encourage our children to do today especially our young girls and I think that is just super important and I know a lot of us will probably think like oh well her dad is Anakin he's Vader he's evil he's all those things but I don't think he's just that I think he's also very passionate he's very loving he really does truly care about the things that are important to him he may not be able to show it in the right way or in a way that would be socially 
socially acceptable and he may go about things the wrong way, but that doesn't necessarily make him, you know, a terrible person. It's He makes some poor choices that were manipulated and things like that. But I think she gets her passion and her ability to really, truly love from her father, her actual you know father. How, mm. father. Yeah, you know how we always pitch stories? Mm-hmm. I want the story, because we know that Bale's doing his thing for the resist the rebellion that's starting and probably lays home with Breha mm-hmm. learning her stuff. And exactly. I want to know, like, what did she teach her? What were the things that's, Oh, yeah. well, you know, and Breha and Padme were actually very good friends. Uh, and so they, oh. there's, I'm sure that the Organas took what was Padme and said, you need to learn these things because your mom was amazing and she did these things. Mm-hmm. And they incorporated in that into the way that they raised her, I would think. I totally see Anakin yeah. in Leia when she grabs a blaster and says, I'm going to get you out of this mess. Right? Because <laughs> totally, Anakin totally. just isn't going to wait. He, you know, he jumps out of the speeder and Coruscant to you know, go get the bad guy. I'm not going to wait. Just going to do it. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Action. Action. A little more. A little less talk. A little more action. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, when we were talking about re- relationships that Leia built, I kind of went to the more obscure. So I went, went with relationships with furry people. And uh, that would be, you know, we think of in The Force Awakens that moment when she's back to sees Han, but she hugs Chewbacca. You know, that's one relationship that was very powerful. I mean, Chewbacca actually uh, stopped fighting in Empire Strikes Back because Han asked him to take care of the princess. Uh, but more importantly, that moment with Wicket, when mm-hmm. she essentially forges... Uh, uh, brings someone else into the rebellion, which is what we're talking <laughs> about. You know, brings someone in that she doesn't speak their language. Uh, you know, it was food and kindness that that worked. And I and then when I think about that, I think about the article that they wrote specifically about Carrie Fisher for the Star Wars Insider. And the last thing, the words that Billy Lord that I brought into that was. Her mom had told her to be kind and be courageous. And I think that moment with Wicket kind of encapsulates Hmm. everything that she wanted to let her daughter know about who, you know, it came out in the character. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and there is true power in being kind and courageous to other people. And even if it's just acknowledging someone as they walk by and smiling at them and things like that, those are so important and stuff we have to do. And I think a character like Leah really embodies that. That makes a lot of sense. I love that. All right. Oh. All right. Well, we're going to close it out how we normally close it out. So you guys can visit us over on our website, which is fangirlsgoingrogue.com. You can find us on Twitter. We are at FG Going Rogue. If you're not following us, please go ahead and hit that follow button. Uh, Trisha is Fangirl Cantina. Sarah is Jedi Tink. And I am at Ice Cold Penguin. You can email us at contact at fangirlsgoingrogue.com. Feedback on this episode or any episode is appreciated. Facebook, Fangirls Going Rogue, just type it in. And then don't forget about our discussion group. And then Tumblr, lots of stuff from Celebration, Fangirls. Fangirlsgoingrogue.tumblr.com. <laughs> you are on a roll, Trisha. You are on a roll. Oh uh, Instagram, we are at FG Going Rogue. You can leave us a voicemail, 331 Ewoks. You can leave us an iTunes review, but until next time, when you hear us in your ears, da 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 da. Yub. 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 Yub.